Okay, why don't you unplug the 110 volt connections right there, and I'm going to loosen these stainless steel hose clamps. And once I do, I'll be able to break this connection. All right, there we go. And now, let me lift that right up. Look at what you've got in here. You actually have a pump and a backup pump built in. So the bottom pump has a float switch. It would discharge into this pipe. If it ever didn't work, there's a second float switch right here to make this work. But both of these pumps work off of 110 volts. So when you didn't have any power, you had two pumps not working. Charmaine, so, mean, here is a better solution. You still will have your basic primary pump right here, made out of cast iron, working off 110 volts. It sits down in the bottom of that sump pit. There's a float switch right here. As the water level rises, you can see the float switch rises right here, makes the click, and brings the pump on. But should this pump ever stop working, either you lose power or the pump itself is broken, then you still have a backup. There's a float switch right here. Now that water level keeps rising because the first pump doesn't come on. And watch what happens. Now this switch comes up, makes the click hear right. it, and it brings on this pump. But this pump is not 110 volts. Okay. This pump works off of 12 volts. It works off of a battery. So these connections come over to here to the battery. When it comes on, it'll be powered off of this. And to be sure that the battery has power when you need it, we have a trickle battery charger right here to make sure the battery is always fully charged. And this comes in a pre-plumbed unit just like this. That's pretty cool. It is. Now before we go into the pit, there's some threaded connections I want to add a little Teflon tape to. Now this is a thread sealant, and it's not sticky at all. So when you apply it, you actually want to apply it in such a way that it compresses against itself. Right. Now, before I put it all together again, I want to show you a little device right here that's very important for a sump pump. It's called a check valve. Now, on each of these pumps is a check valve. If we didn't have it, think about what would happen. That pump would come on, the water leaves, goes up this pipe, and tries to go outside. When the pump shuts off, all the water that's in that pipe would come back down again. So this check valve is a one-way valve. It allows the water to go this way, but it doesn't allow it to go this way. I'll tighten up these connections, and then we can drop it in the pit. Now for the connection on the discharge side of our pump, we're going to use this inch and a half PVC pipe. The connection down here is going to use a hose clamp connector, but you can see that when this pipe comes up, it doesn't quite line up with our old work right there. The pumps are in a slightly different location than the old one. For that, we're going to use a couple of 45 degree angle fittings, and that'll create an offset just about perfect for us to make that nice straight pipe there. At the top, we're going to use this. This is another hose clamp connector, but this goes from inch and a quarter, a smaller size pipe, to our inch and a half size right here. Once I've done that, we'll put the piece of pipe in and make our mark right here. Like a pro. Now, anytime you make a cut like this, you can see there's a little bit of a burr. What I like to do is to actually clean those off and to ream the inside of the pipe make it smooth. All right, now we're ready to clean and to glue the pipe and the fittings. Push it together firmly. Hold it for about a five count. Perfect. All right, good. Looks perfect except for that little purple stripe. Okay. The power for our backup pump is going to come from this. It's a deep cycle marine battery. I'm going to install this into a protective plastic box. The box goes up onto the shelf I installed. That's going to keep it up and away from any water in the basement. And now we just need to make the electrical connections. All right, so that is the last of our low voltage connections. So now we have a couple of line voltage connections. One is right here, the battery charger we talked about. You can see there's power going in. It's charging. And once the battery is fully charged, you'll see it with this indicator light right here. Okay. The other is the 110 volts that's going to go down to our primary pump down here. Now, let's test it. Imagine it's raining, the water's coming in through the French drain, water level rises, the float comes up, pump is on. Oh, that's quiet. Isn't that quiet? All right, so now let's test the backup. This thing fails, the lower one, the water continues to rise, this upper float switch now engages. All right, the pump is on, but you also can hear this really annoying siren that you can disable. And that's designed to tell you that you're in backup mode. All right. And how long does this pump last on the battery? Well, it really depends if it's going to be used constantly and never shut off. It might be four to five hours, but if it runs intermittently, as they often do, you might get a full day out of it. So you now have a primary pump and a backup pump 
Gonna keep this place dry even when the lights are out. Mm -hmm.